Welcome and uh, thank you for joining Global Design Talk by B-Trax. Um, I'm really excited to have Mr. Williams. How would you like me to address you today? Uh, Rob is fine. Rob, yeah. all right. Uh, I'm really excited to have Rob talking to us today. Uh, he is a creative director at a local biotech. Yeah. Um, is, that, is that how we're going to address this one? Sure. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask you more questions about that in a sec, but uh, I'm excited to talk to you because you have a lot of experience, a lot of history. Uh, you've been in the barrier for quite a while. Does that have to do with my age or are we... T a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're the same age, and so... Fair enough. Uh, if I out you, I out myself. Uh, 44. Um, <laughs> uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Why don't we jump right in with that? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm lo local, definitely into the area. Uh, design has been on my radar uh, since out of, uh, probably since high school. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't really know what design or graphic design was, uh, but definitely kind of hit, hit the ground running right around college time and was here in San Francisco. All right, and when you, as a high schooler, what did design mean? Was were you doodling? That's a really that's a really good question. Uh, it was actually designing tattoos for, for for some of my troublemaker friends and t-shirts, and doing photography and just laying copy on top of it. I mean, I, I it was really just a, a hodgepodge of uh, of whatever we thought was cool at the moment. I tried to design a t-shirt for a football team. Uh, <laughs> Drawing lots of muscles on, on on each of the players, and and, and it was uh, no one. They said we're not going to make a shirt of this. <laughs> oh, so uh, you got comfortable with fair, failure early on. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I I, that is actually should be the theme of this talk. Oh right? my god, I don't know what you're talking about. Being comfortable with failure is actually that's the name of this episode. That's free. That's right there. <laughs> there we go. we'll dig a little bit deeper into that one in a bit. Um, cool. So. Tell me a little bit about, so you, you really got into it in college, you said. And uh, yeah, that's when, yeah, definitely. I didn't even know what it was. And the what lured me, to be really honest, was that uh, designers or, let's say, creatives who understood computers mm -hmm. were making money right out of high school, and that was attractive to me. So I was thinking, don't know what I want to be in my life have no career aspirations. I definitely love art. I always identified as an artist. Mm -hmm. And and it seemed like, how do I do both? How do I build in some security and be able to do something creative and fun and innovative that keeps me motivated? Okay. And so I love that you said, how do I build in security? Because that segues really nicely into your first gig after college. You ended up starting your own, and maybe it's not your first gig. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you decided to start your own agency. Yes, and it wasn't definitely right out of college. Okay. Uh, what was unique about my first gig was that uh, it, was, it was unpaid, and I was just hungry. And that, that was one thing that I think is a tip I'd give anyone going into a new job or new market, is you, you really have to be hungry. If, if, even if you did well in school, don't. Don't rest back and say people should see my value. No one's going to see your value. And, and if anything, even if you're the best in a program or in school or in your neighborhood, it does not matter. Uh, people are w really working on a global level at this point, mm -hmm. meaning that everyone is aware of what the best looks like. You know, you have Dribble, you have Behance, you have uh, you have youtube you know you have vmo best of you know so we're being inundated with the best quality work all the time yep. and so the the if anything people don't even have the opportunity for the maturation process of like making mistakes you know being an amateur <clears throat> they expect to be really good and and beat the crowd and so what's problematic is that they then just emulate someone else mm -hmm. and they never develop any of those really cool insights that would give them a, a leg up down the road. Okay. You know, it's about that immediate win, you know. Yeah. So a tangent, I was tangential there a little bit, but uh, uh, to answer your question, uh, I did, the reason for opening up my own studio was that I had worked actually for a couple, I worked for free for a while at a good studio, then looked for at a couple other places mm -hmm. and got into an, another good agency did that for a while. My goal was to, you know, 
how do I put this amount of effort and energy into another uh, job where they're, you know, they're making money off me? Yeah. How do I make, how do I put all this energy in, and then get returns on my investment? If mm -hmm. I'm going to be working, you know, 14 hour days, yeah. how do I, how do I leverage that? That was the idea. But the journey was much different after actually doing and opening my own business. Right. Well, and you, I mean, you stuck with it 15 years, I think, you had your uh, It was about 13 years. You, you okay. go on the wrong Wikipedia page, but yeah. <laughs> I think it's your LinkedIn page. <laughs> uh, but, but that being said, I mean, I'm impressed with by looking at like your LinkedIn. You're atypical well, for I'm the only 30, so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you went to college at 12. Um, <laughs> actually, what you said a second ago made me think. You talk about how everything is global from the get-go, right? Yeah. Like you're competing with yeah. a global uh, design population. How is that, like, I don't know if that was the case when you were in college as much. Definitely not. And I would only even take it, like, revert a step further. Definitely, back in the day, you were competing with your neighbors. You know, mm -hmm. you had your own insular little town. You could be the best in your town and build that confidence over time to really see, I'm really good at football, or I'm really good chef, or, you know, like, I have a creative take on fashion. And, and, and you could build up and people would be appreciative. However, the next generation and this generation and even the past generation, unfortunately, is going to be holding themselves to an unrealistic standard that they have to be at this elite level the person who is in Switzerland in design or, you know, this person in Japan who is just blowing up and saying that I, my art or design or fashion needs to look like theirs. Mm -hmm. And it's just like they don't, they can't see all the steps in between because the bar is so incredibly high. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a new paradigm. And then there's other, a lot of other factors too that would, you know, affect people's motivations and passion and energy mm -hmm. for their work. Does that allow for more opportunities for inspiration, though? Right. Oh, absolutely. And so you're also getting people uh, competing on a new level because they have access to what the best looks like mm -hmm. and also documentation of how someone got there, you know, and what, what inspired them. You know, the access to information is incredible. So for those individuals who are really hungry mm -hmm. for information and inspiration, it's, it's accessible. Got it. Got it. And, you know... You've since then also become an instructor or a teacher, a professor. Um, you, you taught at your alma mater, alma mater uh, the California College of Arts. But also you were a professor at Stanford. Um, sure. And two very different types of schools, two different focuses, I guess, probably of the students you work with. Right? Um, how, how, how did your teaching style differ and how, like, how much education was needed in terms of like at what, what level were you starting with mm. explaining design to, to the folks? Yeah, I've always been interested in uh, teaching. Uh, my parents were both teachers. Uh, the difference is, uh, the difference can be seen in, a, in, a, in e each individual class. Mm -hmm. You always have a spectrum of uh, students who are highly motivated, students who are not motivated, motivated. students who maybe are more aligned to your uh, your history or like, you know, uh, culture, background, whatever, and then the ones who are most different. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that there's a, a kind of a micro ecosystem, even in an individual class. Comparing the schools uh, would be uh, totally different because, you know, at, at uh, the art school, uh, CCA, that was a six-month class and the Stanford classes were one-day workshops mm -hmm. and so that ranged quite a bit where it would be specialty about uh, Stanford would be special how to how to specialize in a specific tool so at Stanford would be one-day workshops yep. where the students would learn you know how can I make the most of the projects that I need to execute on in a one-day period what are the like the top five most important tools? Mm -hmm. So it, that would be within each uh, Adobe software program. It could be InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop. But then also, I, uh, because those classes were so successful, mm -hmm. that I started doing photography classes and mm -hmm. other classes. Uh, the, the general theme of all those classes <clears throat> was 
how do you maximize the quality of content uh, in the shortest amount of period of time? So, and luckily, since I had been, uh, uh, you know, quite versed in all of the Adobe programs and also had to hustle with photography mm -hmm. uh, and just even design my design classes at uh, my alma mater, mm -hmm. I had quite a bit of experience to be able to kind of innovate and be quick with those programs. Got it. What do you miss most? I don't believe you're teaching right now. I'm not teaching anymore. Um, the, I don't, I, okay, the, the thing I miss about teaching is basically the novelty and innovation of new ideas mm -hmm. uh, from young uh, folks. They, that's something that's really, uh, I think is really important to bring into all of our lives. Yeah. And I would like to find an outlet to continue to do that. Got it. You have, you have the, the experience of having taught. So like, I want you to go a little bit more introspective and be like, what, what advice would you give to your younger self? Yeah. Uh, whether we're talking about when you were just getting into the, the space or even honestly younger could be five years ago. Huh. Yeah. Uh, I actually really appreciate that question. Uh, the, I would say this for my younger self and, and anyone who is looking for answers. So, if, you know, if anyone comes across this, you know, video or recording, I would say really the hardest thing from my experience is, is having that belief that things are going to work out. It definitely seems like many challenges, you know, come your way and there's hurdles just one after another, mm -hmm. especially for those who are seeking information mm -hmm. and want to do well and are looking for that answer. It's really about being kind to yourself and, and hanging in there and allowing criticism, allowing critique, allowing uh, uh, opinions that, that can form a leveling up of your work or your, you know, your, your perspective uh, of just allow yourself to, you know, hold the emotions, see what, the, where the opportunities are mm -hmm. and then, and then push forward. I think, I think that's really important because when I was talking about that global aspect of like, you were always comparing yourself to the best of, of everyone, the yeah. best studios, the, the best designers, you know, the best musicians, whatever it is you're doing. It's really hard not to, to, to aspire to that, but then try to figure out how do you even get to that point. Yeah. Uh, that isn't the right question. I, you know, it's great to be inspired. It's great to have a trajectory, yep. but then you need to immediately get back into your own body and say, where am I right, right now? What inspires me? What, what gives me energy? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that energy component is really important uh, because it's going to be the roadmap in which you find what's going to sustain your work and also give you a indication of where you should be focused on. So, you know, if, if you want to go, if you love food and you want to go into food design, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that means, being a chef or being, you know, working on menus or restaurant interiors, mm -hmm. if you have the inclination you want to go there, just know that you're also going to be competing with others right. who are also wanting to specialize in that space. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to often work harder than everyone else around you. And that means what is going to sustain the energy? When do you have enough belief in yourself that you're going to put, do the all nighters, that you're going to go the extra mile, that you're going to push back against someone who's saying, we don't want to do that, or that's not the right direction. When are you going to be, you know, speak up for yourself? you really have to identify what energizes you and stay in that space because there's a thousand and one or a million and one reasons mm -hmm. to shut you down and to, to stop your trajectory. And if you want to be competitive and you want to be a leader and you want to get ahead in that space, then you need to be energized and you need to be in that track. Okay, so... B-track, if you will. Oh, B-track. <laughs> you heard it here. Um, thank you for... That was, that was good. You're the first to do that. Um, so... Compared to what you used to do, like running your own studio and, and now, what, at that time and now, what gave you energy? What part of the job, like, and, and because part, your role now 
is much different, and you can explain that too. Yeah, sure. It's much different than when you are running your own studio. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. So running my own studio, what gave me energy was to define where I wanted to go on my own terms, and if I felt that there was a thread worth pulling, or you know, a client that I really wanted, mm -hmm. I can investigate that, and that would energize me to 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 try something new, to really experiment and to innovate and be also differentiated. Mm -hmm. These are all things I know are very valuable and the people I respected, the designers I respected, had all done that. Uh, so I was following a roadmap of sorts. Yeah. So uh, I actually, I, I love the question because I never wanted to work in a corporate environment. Okay. It was a creative killer, uh, not much for, uh, space for innovation, People are not going to listen to my ideas. And uh, that might be true in some places, but where I'm at now is not the case. And it's actually, uh, I, I've, I've had in, uh, uh, plenty of opportunities to really innovate and to be supported. And it's really a testament to the good people that I work with. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they, when they see someone who's passionate and wants to innovate, there is a... Uh, a environment that caters to innovation mm -hmm. and trying and being willing to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's critical. Uh, so, so the a willingness to fail has been the consistency yeah. between both, but other than that, completely different. You know, like I I would say uh, there's a lot to be said for starting your own thing, but buckle up because it's going to be it's going to be one of the hardest things you've it's ever. It's a wild done. ride. Yeah, yeah. It's incredibly difficult, and I think a lot of people have these visions uh, of what you know what life they're going to have. But yeah. you will be you know uh, dipped in reality real quick. Got it. <laughs> and and the company you're at now is global in nature. Yeah. Um, your focus your focus specifically is more on creating things for the U.S. All for the U.S. US audience. Market, right? Yeah. So um, the, yeah, there's there's folks that do it on a global and uh, there's an interesting little insight that I've had on this global versus local. Mm -hmm. And local, we can take that down to one person or one community or, you know, one city, one state, one, you know, U.S. So yep. it depends on what you mean by local. And, and uh, there's different decisions made at each tier. But the having to go super global I think is a very, very difficult task because let's, let's reverse engineer this. If you are going global, that means you have to make something that is not going to offend anyone, that's going to cater to every person, every background, every race, every culture, every religion, you know, every gender. Uh, you, have to, you have to neutralize and keep it plain vanilla as much as possible just for it to exist. Mm. So that's one of the challenges. I like to play in the space of customization. Mm -hmm. How do I get the one person in the room who really matters to connect, be seen, give them what they most desire, what they want, and then, and also have it be part of our business, uh, you know, objectives. You know, mm -hmm. so where where is that intersection? Mm -hmm. So that that level of specificity, you know, specificity. 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 I have. This is one of my. Here's a. Don't edit it. This is one of my. <laughs> one of my. One of my. Uh, I have. I have many faults, and that's uh, pronunciation is one of them. Some words are harder than others. Uh, I, I. I used to go to a speech therapist, but thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, you brought it up. I thought this was not a hard <laughs> ball kind of interview. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So I think. There was a question there. Yeah, and it had to do with the connection between global and local, and you're focusing on the local piece. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, so the local, the uh, total professionals here, professionalism, it's my middle name. The, uh, I think if you really focus on, a, on, on making sure that your main audience, your target audience, the people you care most about, you make it most valuable to them, mm -hmm. it will affect enough people on a global scale 
where you you will provide a real value to all of them, mm -hmm. and you don't need to 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 make everyone happy. But the people you you're designing for, if you get them to be loyal and committed to you, mm -hmm. and or you know uh, appreciate what you're giving them, uh, then you're you're reaching your objective. So I like to focus more, you know, on the narrow Got objectives. It. Okay, so. How do you communicate with global teams then? Like I know you're working, like when you, maybe there's a global campaign that's being created, right? And then they work with you to figure out how do you take that global campaign and make it localized or relevant for maybe, and, and U.S. market's tough because I think U.S. is, is very much uh, pockets depending on kind of like maybe very the product, much, right? Very so much so, yeah. You, you're, not, you're, not, you're not creating something for everybody in the U.S. even necessarily. Right there's maybe it's a different uh, age range, you know. So you have to think through. Well, if somebody's 65 and seeing this collateral, um, yeah. But how does that work for like? Let's say it's a 65 year old white male. Yeah. Um, I so what you're sort of talking about is like personas and yeah. and having a, a a schematic based upon a certain audience type what's going to resonate with them. Uh, to be really honest, that's not how I work. I've, yep. I've taken those kinds of workshops and yep. I've looked into it. <clears throat> what I like to do where I found a lot of value is talking to a range of people mm -hmm. uh, and asking them what they care most about. So even though there's all kinds of services of focus groups and, and polls and, and you can like extract data, I actually find it much more difficult to go through all these layers of filtering okay. and be so far removed from, from the people I'm trying to connect with. I feel like the insights that I are most valuable is when I'm there interacting one-on-one -on -one with the individual and really get a sense of who they are. And the reason that's so critical is because it's the only way to really be authentic. Mm -hmm. You really <clears throat> know what they stand for, what they want, and you're also not marketing to anyone. Right. You know, you're you are listening to them. Mm -hmm. You're giving, you're understanding what their needs are. And as a designer worth your salt, you're going to figure out how to intersect the two. You're going to say, what can I give them that my company prov uh, provides as of value? But then you know, have a, a just a connection point to establish, you know, an opportunity to build a relationship to go further. So that means you're partnering with other departments, like the, let's say, research team uh, or marketing team around all these activities. Because I'm guessing it's not designer-led per se. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so for sure, collaboration and being with other teams is 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 95 percent of the job. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say I go off and do anything myself these days. Mm -hmm. uh, the I can't speak to where marketing budgets always come from because, again, I I had worked for agencies, ran my own agency, yep. and then you know this would be a first time working in a corporate environment. Okay. Uh, I would say that teams want to they have an objective, and then my goal is to find what would be the most compelling, beautiful, interesting way to highlight what that objective is that that audiences would be hungry for. I have one last question and it's more future thinking. But what design trends are you maybe currently seeing? What uh, excites you? And honestly, what scares you maybe from a, mm. even from a job security standpoint? Yeah. So when I hear you ask that question, my mind immediately goes to the big topic of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Mm. Uh, you know, there's, I think people are more fearful than they need to be. It's just a tool, just like the digital revolution of uh, publishing design applications, all the Adobe stuff. You know, a lot of uh, hardcore designers, photographers were really worried about these tools, but it's just that the field changed. However, I think because I'm in the in the kind of uh, generational group where I was pre, you know, uh, 
pre a lot of these tools or, you know, how common it was, how pervasive it was, mm -hmm. and also the internet and machine learning that I can see what potentially is going to be lost. And what I mean by that is a lot of young folks get dependent upon what is a quick answer? How do I just go straight, you know, straight to what, what it's the answer? Tell me the answers. Mm -hmm. So I actually printed out something in case you asked something about machine learning. Okay. So, uh, cause I know people are trying to, you know, how do you, how do you get into a market? How do you get that job you, 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 uh, you know, want most? Yeah. I want the answers and I want them now and I want them fast. So here I, uh, I printed out, the, what are the top 10 most important attributes a new graph designer entering the job market should, you know, should have? Okay. So technical proficiency, uh, creativity, uh, attention to detail, problem solving, communication skills, adaptability, time management, understanding of branding, receptive to feedback, continual learning and growth mindset. So, you know, it, it will give you the list and it'll give you a little bit of a definition Mm -hmm. But like, let's go to creativity. It says the ability to think outside the box, yep. being fresh, unique perspectives on design projects, the capacity to turn abstract ideas into tangible visual solutions. It sounds good. It's a thorough list. I think it ca captures the main categories. Okay. Everyone's going to be giving the same answer. So on the resume, it's all going to be the, you know, the, the same. And so not that they're wrong. They're on base. They actually give any individual a roadmap saying, oh, these are the important categories. Yep. But unless you go deeper and really go through those lived experiences, the life experiences, yep. you're not going to have context. Everyone's going to be coming with the same list, right? And so you want to come in with, I experienced this with this last project. Yep. You know, I, you know I, I was working on this campaign, this nonprofit, and I came up with some great solutions. So mm -hmm. it's the people that go deeper that are going to have that originality and differentiation yep. from everyone else. Well, what I love about that list is I would say 80% of it doesn't matter if you're going, if you're a designer, it's just mm. good, just <laughs> good advice. Yeah. And I, I think that's actually the way I like to see designers is that the, the, the stereotype or, you know, perspective I hate most is that we just make things look pretty. I mean, I think that's like the worst, uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. I think a designer who is of, of any value and who, who's a, a really great designer mm -hmm. is a problem solver and they use any tools necessary, visuals, uh, content, copy, sound, mm -hmm. you know, like experiential uh, programming. Yep. It's someone who's solving really, you know, difficult problems. Yeah, I think that's great. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, um, so and uh, I forgot the most important thing, actually. Tell me. Yeah, friendship. Oh, <laughs> so I think friendship and being able to be close with others, you know, is how the future of work is going to be done, you mm. know, because everyone's going to be using digital tools. Are you someone that people want to work with? So I have a question for you here. All right. And I hear friendship and I think community. Uh, community is it. But I have a very specific question for you. So let me oh, just... Wow. Uh, well, this was not planned. Nope. So, John, <laughs> would you be my friend? Of course I will. That's awesome. So, uh... Oh! Uh, Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and on that note, we hope that you've enjoyed uh, today's interview. Um, if you did, please... Well, even if you did, please subscribe. And, and uh, comment. Comment and <laughs> like. So uh, appreciate it and look forward to seeing you all again soon.